Hello everyone, let's look at this integral here. This is a trig integral and it's involving a product of two trig functions. One of them is sine and the other one is cosine and then they have different uh, arguments. And so how do we handle this kind of um, integrals? One way to do it is to use integration by parts because this is a product, so we can use integration by parts to integrate this function. Another way is to use the trig identity. In this way, uh, if you know the sum and the difference formula for the sign, then you can actually just use that to manipulate this expression into something else that we can integrate directly. Okay, so let's get started. So first, we are going to <clears throat> start by writing. Okay, so we have <clears throat> this formula right here, which is the sum formula for the sine. And that's equal to sine of A, okay? And then cosine of B, and then plus cosine of A, and then sine of B. And then we also need the difference formula for the sine. So we have sine of A minus B. So now you look at this second one right here, then we are going to be, and actually they're almost the same thing, except that the sign in the middle would be different, right? So that instead of having a plus sign right here, we are going to get a minus sign. So we have a cosine B, now minus sign, and then we are getting the cosine A, and then sine B. So now... If you look at the two equations, and then if you are adding them together, then you can actually get the expression that you want. So let me do that here. So now let's tr just try adding the two equations. So if we are adding the two equations, adding one and two, then we are going to be getting what? Now on the left side of the equation, those two things are just added together, right? So we are going to be getting sine of a minus b. No, sine of a plus b, and then plus sine of a minus b. And then that's equal to, now those two terms are the same. When we add them together, we are going to get two times the sine a and cosine b. And what about these two terms? They are also the same, except that their signs are opposite. So what happens? is that when you add them, okay, they are going to be canceled completely, right? So now the right-hand side of the equation, you only would have the two sine A cosine B. Okay, so now um, we have the sine A and cosine B here. That's actually having the same form as this integral here, this sine of you can treat that as a and then cosine of you can treat that as b but then we have a two in the front right we don't really want this two in the front so what we can do is to divide both sides of the equation by two then we do not have the two in front of the sine a cosine b anymore okay so if we multiply by uh, one over two or divide by two then we are going to be getting one over two times sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b is equal to sine of, well, actually, I need to close the brackets. And then I have sine a cosine b. Yeah, so now our expression is sine a cosine b, which is the same thing as the integrand for this integral. So <clears throat> that means we can replace this product by this expression right here. Even though it looks more complicated, but then it's going to allow us to integrate directly because we're really just getting a sine function and another sine function. Okay, so let's move away this work here because we don't need this anymore. Okay, so let me just move it right here. And then now we go back to the integral and then we start doing this integration here. So, this integrand is going to be replaced by this one half, right? So we have this one half and then oh, and then the integral, okay? So I, I put the one half outside the integral because that's the constant, right? So we only need to focus on integrating the this sum right here, the two functions. So we are having the integral as what? Sine of a plus b. Now, 
Now the A, we can call this one the A, and then the other one we can call this one the B. Okay, and so we are going to get what? Sine of A plus B. What is A? A is 3x, so we are going to be getting the 3x right here. And then plus, right, plus, and then the B. B is the 4x, so we put the 4x right here. And then plus sine of three, uh, 3x, right, because that's the A, so 3x. And then minus the 4x. Yeah, so let's simplify those two terms. We have one over two integral of, um, this one is sine of seven X, okay? And then the other one is actually plus sine of negative X. And so now because this sine function right here is an odd function, we have a negative in there, we can simplify this by writing it as one half integral of sine of seven X and then minus sine of X. Yeah, because it, we can use the odd property of the sign to simplify this function so that when we integrate, we do not have to worry too much about the chain rule. The chain rule becomes trivial in this case when we integrate the sine of X. Okay, so now, um, we're ready to do the integration here. When we do the integration, we are going to be getting one over two. And then what do we get here? Integration of sine, right? We are going to be getting, um, that will be negative cosine of seven X. But for this one, we got to reverse the chain rule, right? So we are going to be getting um, the reciprocal of this coefficient of the X. So we need to put that right here, which is in this case would be one over seven. And then we also need to in integrate the sine function, which would give us what plus cosine of X. And then um, plus the constant of integration, as you can see here. Okay, so uh, if you want to distribute the one half, you can actually just write it as what? Negative one over 14 cosine of seven X and then plus uh, one over two cosine of X and then plus the constant of integration. Yeah. Formally, when we integrate this one and when the one half is being put outside, we should put the plus C inside the brackets. And then when you distribute the one half, then you are going to get one half the C, which is still just another constant. So just to keep things simple, I'm just going to keep the constant on the outside. And then eventually it's still just adding some constant, right? So just leave it like this. Okay, so that's it for this problem. You can actually find um, a link to, in the description that we can integrate this kind of function using integration by parts instead of using the trick identities. Okay, so if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, give me a comment, give me a like, and then also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this one. I will see you next time.